Hey guys, today I'm going to make something a little different than I normally do, and that's this 3D printed dice tower. I didn't make the design, this is from Loot Studios. I saw their stuff this month and I knew I had to try to print this giant dice tower. So I used my new Elegoo Neptune 3 and it printed pretty perfectly. Actually I had a power outage right in the middle of the print and the power save feature of this printer worked just fine and it got right back into the print. All right, so I've gotten this whole thing printed out because of the issues with the power outages and stuff. There are some lines that I've got to, you know, fix, um, cover up, and they also don't join perfectly together. I mean, they, they do a pretty good job pieces, um, but there are some gaps and things. And a lot of the time, that's just how it goes with 3D prints. Um, so I have to glue this stuff together because it's a functional piece and it's large. I think I'm gonna use um, a five minute epoxy to make it kind of fill some of these gaps, but also be really strong of a hold. So I'll have to do that. And then I'm gonna take some putty and stuff and fill some of the gaps. I'm gonna cover that with grime and moss and vines and stuff, I am sure. Uh, so it, it won't be very noticeable in the end, but I wanna really get this thing together, put putty on it, and then sand a lot of the edges. Um, just to make it all perfectly ready to prime and then get painted. So I definitely wanted to talk to you guys about the state of the channel and how I'm feeling lately about all the projects. And to be honest, things have been obviously slow in terms of growth for this channel in the last few months compared to its first year. I think the first year, everything grew so fast and there was so much excitement around it that it's a little bit of a downer this year when things are moving a lot slower. With that said, I have had a few larger projects in the works for a while now that just haven't come to completion yet. So you will be seeing some of those and there's at least one that's really exciting and I can't wait to show everyone. But I've definitely had a little bit of a lack of motivation. I did have a week where we just went on vacation and so it's been hard to get back into things. So for this video, I wanted to try something that was a little bit quicker and easier to get into and I had a ton of fun with this one. Yeah, I didn't design it, all I did was print it out, but then I had to cover the gaps, I had to texture it and paint it and do everything how I want to for my little touch of my style. The cost of everything on this channel has also been something of a strain re recently. Last year I started making a good amount of money with the ads in the last few months of the year, and I haven't been making that much this year. I do have my awesome patrons that support me each month, but that's one of the only main incomes from this channel right now, and often the materials alone cost way more than even I get through Patreon. So I started to reevaluate a lot of that, and quite possibly, on a very limited basis, I'm going to open up commissions. You'll just be able to pay me for making a project that you want, and I would show the process on the channel, but at that way I would be paid for what my work is and the materials for all of that and so I wouldn't be as much in the hole. I absolutely couldn't do a lot of what I do on the channel without the awesome companies that have sent me tools and machines for free to try out the 3D printers and various tools, some you'll see later, filmmaking type stuff, has just been awesome in allowing me to do this kind of stuff without spending thousands of dollars on the tools. So while I did want to just kind of let you know where I'm at and that I have had some struggles on the channel, I am really excited about what we're going to be doing in the future with it, and I'm not stopping anytime soon. I really appreciate all of you who continue to view and comment and support me in any way you can. It's been a really awesome time to get to know a lot of you and see what types of things that we could explore on this channel. So... My wife and I have been playing Dungeons and Dragons for probably about a year now and I've started to do some DMing and so has she and we've been really enjoying just playing some games and recently my wife and I have also started making our own dice. My wife is getting really into it and very soon she may start a small shop where she'll make custom handmade dice and I felt like this dice tower would be a really fun thing to do at this time. Once I 3D printed it, I added a lot of this texture from just spackle paste and that hid a lot of the layer lines. Then I did a bunch of different painting techniques 
started adding these vines here and I'm going to add moss and a few other little finishing touches as well as a couple little LEDs. I really think a project like this is a great way to get into this whole hobby. If you don't have a 3D printer, you can certainly buy something already made or have a service or a friend make something uh, 3D printed for you. But then all you have to do is paint it and weather it and all of the things how you like. You don't have to worry about designing something and building it from scratch and all of this kind of stuff. You can get into some of the techniques and come out with a really fun, cool product that in this case is functional for gaming. There are so many awesome resources for incredible 3D models like this. A lot of them are on Patreon where you pay each month and get a ton of models for free. Then you just 3D print whatever ones you like. Now I have to thank the awesome guys over at PMI Gear for sending me their Smoke Genie. This thing is not just a handheld fogger. It's a very well built tool designed for professionals on film sets and people who do product photography and things like that all of the time. It essentially is this main unit that has the batteries and the heating coil and all of that and a whole bunch of accessories. With all the different accessories and modes you can get a normal thin haze, a thicker fog, or even a really thick low lying fog like dry ice. I've never been able to get all of these types of fog with one device. Um, much less so easily and quickly in the palm of my hand and this thing is incredibly reliable. They send it also with a little fan so you can disperse it and make it more like an even haze quicker and then this attachment is that dry ice fog effect that I was talking about. It's incredible it just lays on the table or in your hand or in a cup and there's so many interesting things you can do with it. Before people start commenting you can just do this with a vape you can certainly modify vapes to do some of these things, but they're incredibly unreliable and they don't last nearly as long. So when you're on a film set and you need to keep getting shots over and over, over a long period of time, this thing is very reliable and a vape that's modified would just not cut it. So while this is a very expensive tool, for the people that really need it for their job, it is incredible. This is the RG Kit Play motor system that I've shown before. I'm using two motors and programming them together so one spins the piece and the other drops a die out of a cup. And I can do this repeatedly over and over. This allows me to get the movement of the spin timed perfectly with when the die drops down for the shot. 